Hi, and welcome to the 10-minute video summary. The message was shared on the 13th of December, 2015 at Henrietta Christian Fellowship. My name is Don Bolt. I'm the senior pastor at the church, and for the next 10 minutes, I'd like to take some time to just share the essentials of, of the message uh, from church this morning. And uh, we've been doing some things special around the church, you know, with the, the Advent season and approaching the celebration of the birth of Christ. And we have uh, one of our members who's kind of back and forth between France and here. She's been away for a little while. And she, she loves this, uh, this painting that's behind me. And so she asked me if I would put it in the backdrop again uh, for one of the messages. So... Uh, there it is for you, and uh, just enjoy, okay? So, uh, but beyond that, we're also taking some time in these weeks leading up to Christmas uh, to really uh, examine our hearts before God and uh, to ask God to show us things, you know, places where uh, God might want to do some work in us. And so uh, this week we're looking at John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5, and uh, this is the story of the birth of Christ from the, the Gospel of John. A very, very short treatment, but it's powerful, okay? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into a being uh, that has come into being. Uh, in Him was life. This is important. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So, you know, this very short treatment of his birth, you know, he came into the world, all right? You know, Jesus came into the world, and he was that light, and he was that life uh, that, that we needed. And so, you know, it's in him that we find it. Now, it, it, the word that it's using for life, there's two words that are used in the Bible in the New Testament for life. One is bios, you know, you're familiar with that, biological life. Uh, and uh, that, that kind of life has a, a duration, okay? It's, it's got a time attached to it, and it is constantly, that, that time that's left is always growing shorter from the minute we're born, all right? So it, it, it's, it's, it's a measured uh, time of life, okay? But zoe, which is the word that's used here to describe what Jesus brings, all right, is that spiritual breath of life uh, that lasts for eternity, and it doesn't dissipate. It grows ever stronger. And so, you know, this is what Jesus brings to us, and that that life, it was the light of men. It was you know, what is light? Light reveals things, okay? And so as Christians, uh, we are living uh, in a life, all right, that uh, is given to us by God, wherein we are constantly looking to him for revelation to show us more, more about him, more about ourselves in relationship with him. And so just something to consider, you know, in the weeks approaching Christmas, you know, that God can do something in us that can overflow perhaps into the lives of others as well. All right, so the message for this week is really uh, looking at uh, the experience that Mary had as we approach the birth of Christ in the scriptures found in Matthew chapter 1 uh, verses uh, 35 through 56 and um, <clears throat> and what it is is that you know Mary was uh, you know having some questions with this angel who came to visit her to tell her that she was going to be the, mo the mother of this child that was going to be called the son of God <clears throat> and she has these questions and so the angel answers her and said to her the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you for that reason okay for that reason the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God some try to make more out of Mary, but Mary really, you know, her role was to, to submit to God and let him overshadow her. Uh, and for that reason, because God overshadowed her, that's why this child is the son of God. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. And he, she who is called barren is now in her sixth month. For nothing will be impossible with God. And this is something the angel is really trying to make sure Mary understands because what she's about to experience would seem impossible, but nothing is impossible with him. And Mary said, this is important. This is, this is the right response when God tells you he's going to do something. Behold the bond slave of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. His work was done. All right, and so there's three things that we can learn from uh, from this meeting. Okay, one, the incarnation of Jesus Christ happened by the Holy Spirit. The power of the Most High overshadowed Mary. Therefore, therefore, this child would be called the Son of God. All right, and so that willingness to be overshadowed by God, uh, and that you know that we aren't the important one in the midst of all this. We're the one being used by God. That's a tremendous privilege, and people look at that and say, "Wow, I want to be used by God, God that way." At least some people are going to feel that way. All right, so. Anyways, then he goes on to say, look, um, you know, that nothing will be impossible with God. You know, and there is this need for us to understand that uh, everything that we ask of God may not necessarily come to pass, but nothing is impossible with him. You know, we shouldn't be afraid to ask. We shouldn't be afraid to pray bold prayers and, and, and ask God for the things that, that God has said he, he desires to give to us, okay? So, uh, thirdly, uh, Mary knew the right reply. 
All right, she became devoted to the Lord's purposes and his interests without regard, with disregard to her own. All right, and that's that's a hard place to come to. You know, understand this was not an easy uh, role that, that God was pulling Mary into. You know, her genealogy prepared her for it. Somebody in the congregation pointed that out this morning. You know, his uh, Joseph's genealogy is the official, you know, on paper, uh, Father of Jesus, you know, qualified this couple uh, to be the ones that would bring forth this child. But it was the work of the Holy Spirit uh, that the power of the Most High overshadowed her. That's what brought it to pass, okay? And so, uh, now it says, now in verse 39, it says, and now the time... Uh, at this, now, at this time, Mary arose and went in a hurry. She went in a hurry. Okay, the first thing she did was go in a hurry to the hill country, to a city of Judah, and she entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. Okay, so the first thing she wanted to do was just the same thing the shepherds wanted to do, which was she wanted to go and see what God had done. All right, so that was her first priority. Okay, verse 41 says, Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, and the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she cried out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, and how is it that happened to me that the mother of my Lord would come to me? For behold, when the sound of your voice, your greeting, reached my ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy, and and she says, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And, you know, can I just, you know, maybe just emphasize this point. You know, when, when you believe that God has, has told you something's going to come to pass, and we've all had the experience of believing we heard God and maybe we didn't. But, but when you believe that God has shown you something, when you believe God has, has, has told you something, you know, to believe. You know, don't, don't give up on it so easily. And, uh, you know, and, and, and it says, blessed is the one who believed that God would fulfill what he spoke to her, okay? And God blesses the ones who believe him. Okay, blessed are you among women, she says. All right? And then it, it goes on. Okay, verse 46 says, And Mary said, My soul exalts in the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. Very important. We're going to come back to that. He, for he has regard for the humble estate of his bond slave. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. Okay, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Two things that come out of this, okay? One is, it is good for our soul. You know, the, the, this life that we're experiencing here is good for us in that to exult in the Lord. I think in our culture in America, we don't do much of that, okay? We we tend to, we exult in our possessions and our experiences, but but as far as just exulting in the Lord, you know, the, 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 my life would just, just be, be filled with joy and, and just, oh, with hope because of the things that, that God is to me and the things that he's doing in my life, and that, that I I would rejoice in him and my spirit, okay? The you know, soul and spirit, two different things, all right? And that in my spirit, that place where I experience the spiritual life uh, that I've received from God through Jesus Christ, you know, that, 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 you know, that, that, you know, that I would rejoice in that place. And that, you know, she makes declarations, mighty uh, the mighty one has done great things for me. You know, that you know that when God does something for us, we should be out there telling people, and the holy is his name, to understand that, you know, God does these things because of who he is, not because of who I am. God is good. God is great, you know, to do these things. Mary goes on, and his mercy is upon generation after generation toward those who fear him. He has done mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those uh, with... Uh, that are proud in the thoughts of their heart. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has exalted those who are humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent away the rich empty-handed. He has given help to Israel, his servant, in remembrance of his mercy. As he spoke uh, to our fathers, to Abraham and his descendants forever, and Mary stayed with her about uh, three months and then returned to her home. Okay, so, you know, there's things that we come away from this with, okay? One, God scatters the ones that are proud in their thoughts of their hearts, okay? God elevates the humble, okay? We, you know, there's things that we look at as, as positive qualities in, our, in our, our country, in our culture, that really God doesn't, okay? The, you know, that self-confidence, that thing where I, I believe in myself, you know, God desires for us instead to, you know, put our faith and trust in Him, all right? So there's this, you know, so, so please understand this, this importance of being humble before God, all right? And it, He elevates the humble, okay? He, he, he prefers a people, that, that are lowly, uh, that may even be, that are weak and lame sometimes, but who will actually love and serve him. You know, he, you know he, God can provide the strength. Deuteronomy 5.29 says, Oh, that they had such a heart in them, that they would fear me and keep my commandments always, that it might be well with them, 
and with their sons forever, okay? And, uh, you know, to remember at the end of all this that, you know, that, you know, what is the reason, you know, that, that God does good for us? Why does he help us? He gives help according to this scripture because he remembers his mercy. And to understand that you, me, that we are objects of God's mercy. And uh, as, we, as we enter into this season, as we prepare ourselves uh, for that time when we celebrate uh, the, the, the birth of Christ, uh, to, to, to take some time to consider the experience of Mary and all this and the things that she learned from her interaction with that angel who was speaking to her in the name of the Lord. You know, the things that she heard because Elizabeth was full of the Holy Spirit. All these things uh, were given to her as expressions of God's mercy towards her. And with that, I'm going to say God bless you. We'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summary.